This is a before and after preview of an edit I did in Lumina Neo. A very good alternative to Adobe Lightroom, not only it is easy to switch to, but also has a lifetime license option. So if you are tired of Adobe monopolistic behaviors, here is something you can try for free during a 30 days trial. You can find a link in the description as well as 10% discount coupon code. Even though they provided me with free license to do this review, I will share not only the benefits, but also notable shortcomings that are inevitable when you compare two different products, especially when one is much younger than the other. So, what do I personally look for in a Lightroom alternative? For me, it has to provide a similar set of basic tools like exposure, white balance controls, curves and HSL. Now, I would love this to be implemented in a way that I can quickly switch to a new tool without steep learning curve, as this could be a challenge with some free tools I tried. Second thing I need is support for camera color profiles and lens corrections, especially with latest mirrorless Canon lenses, it is a must-have feature. Then I need a robust local correction tools, preferable with AI-based subject detection. Lastly, the software has to have a good performance, so the adjustments can be done in real time when adjusting the sliders to precisely nail the ideal settings. The last point is a challenge for a lot of paid software I tried, especially with 45 megapixel fights from my Canon R5. Now, I don't need to tether, nor print, nor have a sophisticated photo library with elaborated tagging options, and those are the main shortcomings of Lumina Neo. I am happy to report that all my requirements are met by Lumina Neo, so let's quickly go through a typical edit of one of my favorite photographs I took recently in Gran Canaria, so you can see in practice how those requirements are met. So here we are in Lumina Neo library, and as you can see you have some basic features, like you can create albums, you can mark pictures as uh, favorites, and you can also add different folders. This is the image I was talking about, and the way it works is that we have all the tools available here on the right side, similarly to what we know from Lightroom, which makes it much easier to learn. Uh, but then all the edits that we took, we can actually review them here and modify them if, if we want to. So let's start from the scratch. And the first thing we should always do here is jump into develop module. So in the first run of this tool, you can actually change camera profiles, but then you have also all the adjustments that you would typically do in a basic edit in Lightroom. So you have exposure control, you have uh, smart contrast, highlights, shadows, and also black and white. So you have all those parametric sliders that allows you to control the exposure better. You have typical curves. If you want to use them, you can also correct uh, color features like temperature, tint, saturation and vibrance, as well as sharpness, you can reduce uh, basic noise and you also have optical correction. So this image was shot with uh, Canon 16mm 2.8 RF lens and this lens is taking huge advantage of uh, correction within the camera. So I haven't seen this uh, pine when I was taking the picture. It's just added here because uh, this is uncorrected image. But as you can see, if you fix distortion, those things will get eliminated. So this is very important if you are using such lenses. In this case, for me, it's not that important. I will use uh, chromatic aber aberrations uh, corrections. However, I don't need to fix the distortion because I think actually I can use the wider view that this lens provides without those corrections and I can crop this part of image later on because I think it will look good in 16 by 9. But as I said, you have all these options available here. Uh, I will also keep a vignette because I think it actually adds to the interest of this photo. However, since this image was exposed uh, to the right, I need to uh, now tune down a bit the exposure, uh, maybe also improve the lights in the shadows, a bit in the blacks. Maybe I want to have still some contrast left. So just play a bit with shadows and blacks. I will take down a bit white. So, so later on, we can also have some more space to modify those uh, colors and also let's see what you can do with highlights i think i can also put those highlights back a bit so this is more closer to what i remember seeing i will also switch to camera landscape because it will give us much better starting point and this is exactly what my camera captured so i know that this already looks pretty good but i think i can also demonstrate you some other features of this software so yeah we can see before and after 
So one thing that's very important is that all the adjustments that you are making are happening in the real time. This is where I found a lot of programs struggle with is that, you know, you need to wait a bit for the adjustment to take place. And while Luminar Neo actually reduces the resolution of the picture when you change those parameters, you can at least fine tune the results to your likings. And I think this is much more precise way to adjust those features. I think this image already looks pretty good, uh, but let's still play a bit with the color. Um, so if we go here, as I mentioned before, I'd really like if the software allows you to do some HSL corrections and, and this one actually allows you to do that. Again, you can also do masking. And this is something that's really interesting because after you did this initial develop uh, run, you can actually mask every single tool in the way you really want. So now you can actually adjust again, exposure, curves, temperature, in a selected area that you, you you selected with your mask. And here you can just use like a regular brush where you just paint over. Uh, you can also use typical gradients like linear gradient, radial gradient. You can actually select luminosity. So this is something that's extremely powerful in the recent Lightroom uh, additions. We will be happy to see that this feature is also available in Lumina Neo. Then you can also use AI uh, for selecting and masking different uh, items. I think uh, this is this is where you can, for example, select sky, flora, mountains, natural ground, and this is exactly what this software detected. So you can, you know, click on this, and and those elements will be selected. So you have this basic AI functionality, but you can also use AI to find and select then different objects on the scene. So this is very basic scene. So um, yeah, as you see, this this rock can be selected probably this rock, this rock. So this is more granular. You can really pick up what would you like to see. Basically, this masking tool is available for all the tools where it makes sense. So this is something that's not available in Lightroom. Here you can mask almost anything you want. Now, I also need to mention that uh, Lightroom has an advantage and that is intersecting masks. This functionality is not yet available. So I hope that this will happen soon. You can still manipulate those masks quite a lot, but not to the extent that you will get in Lightroom. So as you can see, we have uh, all the basic developed features that you want to use uh, coming from Lightroom. We have uh, good color management features like HSL. We have masking, we have color profiles, we have lens correction. So this is all working with very good performance. Now let's look at the features that are unique to Lumina Neo, and I will not cover all of them, but I think I just want to give you some highlights of the things that I really, really like. The first thing is Erase. This is not generative AI. However, I still feel like this has better results than what you get in Lightroom in both generative AI and with the regular uh, eraser. So we can remove different pieces very easily and the results are amazing. I think this is especially visible when you want to remove something along the edge. This is where I find uh, Adobe struggles quite a lot and removing things close to the edge is much better in Lumina Neo. You have also some uh, AI based tools based on the type of the photography. So there is something for landscape photographers, there's something for portrait photographers, but since this is a landscape photo, let's see what we have here. So I, I'm not a big fan of fake sun rays, but you can have that. What I really like is twilight enhancers. So this could be useful for this specific photo that I took uh, during a sunrise. This is a tool where with a move of a slider, you actually adjust the colors of the twilight. Now, this is nothing super strong or excessive. It emphasizes the colors, the atmosphere of the morning. You can actually fine tune it, how much you want to have those effects visible in the picture. However, I think it's a great tool for people who are struggling with their color adjustments. Uh, this really simplifies it and makes the final results pop a bit more without being over excessive. So this is something that I highly recommend. Uh, just to play with because again one slider it actually does what you would do with hsl that means increasing the oranges and pinks also maybe reducing a bit other colors to make those uh, sun colors pop i think if you are coming from lightroom you won't have any problems using your regular ways of working but for a new starters this could be a very useful feature to improve the final picture without you know needing to learn all the details one thing that I really like in the set of professional tools here is super contrast, because this is a 
very nice way to control contrast in different areas based on the tone. So we can separately control highlights, midtones and shadows. And this allows us to really increase the contrast without damaging the sky or without uh, damaging the shadows. And we can still improve the overall contrast of the image. And, and this is really cool because uh, you don't need to play with curves. This is very simplified version of parametric curves that we have in Lightroom. Uh, I actually really like this tool a lot. The last touch here on this image, let's just uh, crop it to 16 by nine. Here we are, this is the final result. Uh, we can see before and after. Let's just play a bit with those sliders. As you can see, with just few clicks, we can create an image that's much closer to what uh, we've seen in reality. And as you can see, it's very similar to Lightroom. So if you know how to use Lightroom, you will find this tool pretty useful. And then again, you don't need to pay for monthly subscription. You can buy lifetime license, or if you want to still pay subscription, you will pay significantly less than you would pay with Adobe subscription. So I hope you find this useful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like. Thanks a lot. Have a good day and see you in the next video. Bye.